Hello everyone, my name is Otavio and this is the Galilean Library and today I'm here to review The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. The, the Hundred Thousand Kingdoms is the first book in the Inheritance series and I have the bind up here, that's how I read it. And the first book is about um, 390, maybe 400 pages, something like that. And it's N.K. Jemisin's debut novel. I'm not gonna hold this because this is huge and heavy, <laughs> but yes, I'll talk about it and maybe I'll put the cover for the 100,000 Kingdoms up here so you guys can check it out. I have to say though that this book has been very divisive. I've seen a lot of people that really don't like it and a lot of people that really love it and some people falling in between but you know you either fall on one side or the other from what I have seen on the internet and I thought that was super interesting and I think I know why and I have to say I fall on the side of the people who loved this book I really really adored it I thought it was so much fun to read I had a really good time reading this book it was great for my kind of reading slumpy sort of period and yeah I, I really highly recommend it. So in this book we follow Yena, I think that's how you pronounce her name, and she is sort of the leader of this small nation to the north and all of the nations in this fantasy world are controlled by one empire, one government and she, her grandfather is the emperor, if you will. And one day he calls her into Sky, which is the uh, capital of this kingdom. And also the name of the castle, a floating castle atop of this city. And he calls her there and he tells her that she is now officially considered in line for succession. And she does not believe that because her mother, his daughter fell out of favor for some things she did and for the guy she chose to marry and so Yena is obviously very distraught and doesn't know why exactly she's in line of succession and what's gonna happen to her and this new environment she's thrust in is very very dangerous and she definitely cannot trust everybody there the the nicer twist I think in this book or one of the nicer twists is that there is a whole mythology behind it. There are gods and there was a god war. Sometime in the past, I don't know exactly the amount of years, but it's a long time in the past. And this god war established this empire and it also ended up with four gods being enslaved. And those four gods that are enslaved actually live in the palace and are controlled by the ruling dynasty of this kingdom and that's where things get super interesting and yes suffice it to say the setting and the premise in this book were really really phenomenal i was really excited to learn everything about this world and to understand what this war was and what's going to happen next and it was really really electrifying it was a really great fast-paced read i thought so um, the two reasons I think some people might not enjoy this book. First is that there is a very prominent romance side story or sometimes center story. So it is sometimes focused on that and I am not a person who usually enjoys romance. I actually don't really like it and I think it can get really corny and really bad really quickly but I actually really really enjoyed the romance in this book. It was super interesting kind of crazy and kind of really fun to read and yes yeah, so i i would recommend somebody who does not like romance to try it out you might not like it but there's a chance that you might you know so why not the second reason why i think some people might not enjoy this book is that there is an odd sort of writing style here sometimes yena will have these internal monologues that are kind of weird and they kind of break up the story a little bit which can be odd and in, sometimes does not work well for the pace but in other times it really doesn't make any difference but um, in the end while you're reading this you kind of realize that there is a big reason for this writing style and I think that's why it pays off in the end but it might be difficult to get through 
if you don't like those sort of breaks in the pace. So considering my five parameters, um, premise, plot and pace, characters, writing and storytelling, and ending and satisfaction, I ended up giving this book an average of 4.2 stars, which is pretty good. Um, really, really, really great read. So that is rounded down to four stars and good reads. If you wanna read the written review, a more detailed, explanation on why I loved or didn't like certain aspects of this book, you can head down to my newly created blog. Yes, I will do a video only for that because there are some really cool features in the blog that I want to tell you guys, but it's uh, super fun. I actually am really enjoy the process of making the blog. But anyway, I'll put the link for the review in the description box below and you can click and check it out. And yes, feel free to leave feedback as well because that would be really, really appreciated. And yes, so that's it for today, guys. And I will be continue on with this series. I probably will review more of it in the future. Um, but I, I am, I'm putting down this huge bind up for a while because I have a lot of books to read before the year is over. Some other stuff were released this year and I'll get back to it in the beginning of next year, not too far from now, which is kind of scary, but yes, I'll be back with more reviews for this series specifically in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Ciao.